What is up guys? I was a bit sick last week. I didn't get a chance to post. And so I wanted to make a quick video today just to keep the momentum going. And what I want to show you in this video is really how I structure my workflow, because I think it's so important. And I've, and I've actually had to remind myself of this. If you don't have a good uh, structure and you don't have a good uh, setup for coding, you're going to waste a lot of time. So to give you an idea of how I like to structure things, um, you can see that I've got some some different panes on my screen and I'm going to go over each of them, how they all work. And then I'm also going to do some live coding with you, showing you how I actually work with these panes. So this pane, the one that my, my mouse is over right now, um, this is where I'm busy interacting with my first Claude agent. And one thing that I like to do is I'm always uh, working with multiple Claude agents at the same time. So the reason why is because when one is busy working, I used to just sit there and wait for it. And it started to just annoy me because you don't really have to wait for it. Like with, with the Claude Max plan, you can actually just start working on something else at the same time. So, you know, they always just say like multitasking is really bad, but when it comes to AI agents, your time can be maximized by using multiple. So you can see I've got my one, uh, the one agent that's busy running over here. And I've just been busy debugging um, something that's on the, uh, like that I'm busy working on. And then, uh, yeah, same on the other side. I'm busy, uh, yeah, working with it to to fix something. So uh, this section is where my, my terminals are, are living. So, well, what you say like terminal logs, right? So on the, on the left, I have the NPM server that's busy running. And then on the right, I have Convex. So Convex is essentially a database provider. And this is uh, something that I've been using to do like, I think it's, it's called like serverless, serverless database um, a, a coding with uh, Next.js. And um, essentially th this is the perfect setup for me because I used to in the past have a bunch of these little like, a bunch of these little tabs inside of VS Code. And the challenge with this is I just don't really like having to switch tabs all the time to go look at like terminal output. So having it set up this way has just made it much, much simpler because ultimately we have all the stuff that I, that, that I need to be productive and to be able to code right in this workflow. And so with that said, I'm going to give you just kind of a live demonstration of how I actually, uh, you know, work with these agents use the debug logs from the server over here. And then, um, oh yeah, the one thing I also didn't show you, which I'll quickly just uh, touch on, is I do have some sort of tabs over here. And the reason that I have this is because you'll notice, if you look at my full uh, workspace over here, the way that I have recently changed working with Cursor, and you know, this is just my, what I found to be best, but I, I do really like this, is I can have all of my code projects in, in a single cursor uh, instance. And I used to have to like s separate them into multiple instances, but then ultimately you just end up with like super messy kind of like desktop where you've got a lot of different things that you have to kind of switch tabs all the time. So I really like this approach because I can just quickly switch. I, if I want to switch to a project, I just, um, you know, CD into that project in a terminal and then I can start working on it from there. And you notice uh, the very small part of my screen right at, at the top here is actually the the coding uh, terminal. So I'm sure there's some people that would be like triggered by this, but I, I honestly, you know, I could, but I don't really have to touch the code anymore. I'm mostly just working with the agents. Um, you know, sometimes if I'm really, uh, you know, feeling adventurous, I, I will try and like go through and understand like if there's something that I want to change. But yeah, ultimately, you know, you can get very, very far uh, with today's agents without having to write a single line of code. And as long as you know the principles, which is why, you know, I've made the other video on, you know, how to uh, avoid the mistakes that a lot of agents make and, and these types of things. So with that said, now let's talk about like the actual live workflow. All right. So right now what I'm busy doing is I'm debugging and something that I had to uh, fix right now is yeah like I'm, I'm busy trying to get webhooks working within my application so you can see I've got these different tabs and I'm going to switch to a, a different kind of directory within my same cursor window so over here in this directory I've got like you know, another terminal open and this one I'm just using to send webhooks from so all I need to do I've already got the python script created and all I do is I just hit 
um, yeah, just hit that. And then it says uh, test complete and it sent the webhook, right? Now, as soon as that happens, the next thing is I look up over here at my, my logs because I've already got it set up to tell me about the webhook instance. And so we can see, all right, cool. So webhook execution successfully started. Uh, this is a good sign. So I was debugging this already for a while and I was getting into some issues like it was not sending the webhook, but this time it actually did work. So ultimately then uh, I would go to the front end and actually take a look like, okay, did this actually work on the front end? Is it is it working the way that I want? If not, the next thing is I would take this I would take this log, which I've extensively like, you know, set up myself or set up with the agents to make sure that it's descriptive, uh, which, you know, just reminds me, I should probably make a video just on that because that was a huge game changer for me. If you do good logging, the agents have a much better way of understanding the problems. So um, maybe idea for another video, but we would take this log and then going back here to the, uh, to the bottom, I would then take this and I would say, uh, just paste it in and say, uh, this is still not working. And then, you know, give whatever comments that I need to, to kind of like guide it into the right direction. And yeah, and then that's pretty much it. Then the agent would just go and iterate based on that. And, and yeah, and then you just continue that way. So um, that's pretty much the, the way that it works. So yeah, actually, you have be careful of that. You have to switch back to the, the correct um, terminal. But yeah, the agent would just continue working on that. And then that's pretty much the workflow. So it's so it's super simple, but having these four different windows where I can just immediately test something, see the console outputs, take that console output, paste it into the chat agent or like the the AI agent, get the AI agent working. So while it's busy working, I can just change it and then I can go to the second agent and I can start prompting it with stuff that I wanted to work on as well. Uh, this has made me super productive because ultimately you never you're never waiting around for something to happen um so there was a lot of waiting in the past when i was coding especially with python python is such a pain to code with because when you have a massive uh, massive project it can take like 10 minutes or sometimes to to get to the the point where it's it's set up and working correctly and then as soon as you find the bug you have to start over <laughs> but yeah that's pretty much what i wanted to share with you in today's video super simple one i know but yeah, I wanted to just keep the momentum going. So thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions or, or any tips or anything that you've uh, been experimenting with yourself. And I look forward to hearing it in the comments. And uh, yeah, have a great weekend.